G'day, it's Cliff from Down Under. In this series, Rapid Turn Set Up and Run, we're going to get into setting up the tools and we'll probably get into setting up the tool offsets. Okay, so for a bit of a background, first of all, let's run the part so you can see roughly what I'm doing. So if you're working alone and you want to mount that gang tooling platform on, you don't really want to be straining under there holding the weight of it while you try and engage screws. Um, and at the same time you don't want to sit it on hard packers because then you could damage the vertical slide powering down. So I just put some polystyrene foam underneath there to hold it approximately in position and then I can drop the whole head down. see it compressing there if I get jammed up trying to do it with one hand while I've got the camera on but you see the general idea I can drop the head down and then engage the screws uh, without straining myself or damaging the machine so now I've got a couple of the screws started and I can lift the head up out the way to get at the underneath and fit the four screws and tighten them up well, because Rapid Turn is aluminium, listen to the rain on the roof. Winter's coming, guys. Uh, because Rapid Turn's aluminium, it's quite an easy lift. I mean, I'm not particularly strong, and it's quite easy to lift that on there. Um, it is a bit of a pain engaging a T-nut down in there. See that T-nut there? I haven't got it engaged yet. It's a really awkward uh, position and you can't get a spanner on it very easily because it's adjacent to a casting web that's a real pain so if you're planning to take it on and off regularly you'd want to re-engineer that part for sure you can just get at it with a 22 mil open end spanner just doing a little bit of a turn at a time and flipping it over and slowly tightening it up it's not ideal but it works this is a blasted nuisance, it happens about once a year, look at it, heavy rain of a particular kind, finds its way in, oh dear dear dear, now we've got a leak in the workshop. So before we tighten the bolts up, we just check that we got it set in line with the spindle and the X and Y axis. It's a good idea to work off the end of the spindle, although it's slightly cup shaped. If you compare it with one side and the other, you can clock it up in line with the Y axis. You could also clock up the end of the casting, but I've found that's not as accurate. It's slightly rounded and it's not as precision as working to the end of the spindle. 
You might have noticed this very clever little eccentric dial-in key mounted here so that you can set rapid turn up to reproduce its position each time um, but you'll find the fit is not perfect and you've still got to check it with a dial indicator anyway I found that vice keys and the like are not that useful you still need to dial it in the final bit anyway you might as well dial in the whole thing if you've been following my earlier videos on rapid turn you might notice I've run this part before and so I'm setting it up again now a year or so down the track um, and I'm a bit concerned that with the upgrades in PathPilot I'm on version v2.1.4 I want to make sure that uh, before I set all the tools up and the work up and get everything all the offsets set I want to make sure that it's basically going to be okay so I've just loaded up the program run cycle start you know you can um, have the uh, where are we have your maximum velocity slider down low and just make some basic checks that the program you used before is still going to work you know I don't really want to spend a couple of hours setting all the tools up only to find that there's an incompatibility with the code that I've produced and the latest version of PathPilot. It seems to be okay, um, so I'll carry on and get it all set up. Well, I'm just putting in the back vertical post now. Um, I've just got it held in with two cap screws here. I haven't bothered to dowel it. It's really only a, a rough prototype. But it doesn't take a second to dial it in and tighten it up anyway. I guess if you wanted to make a really classy production model, you'd dowel that uh, drop-down post for the three-quarter inch bores in place. My earlier video series on rapid turn, I go into this. I remove the spigot or give it clearance between the back plate and the chuck and uh, fit hexagon bolts in there so that you can get at it with a spanner. And then you can dial in concentricity. Um, it only takes literally half a minute, and you can get your three jaw chuck to be as accurate as a collet. And so the next stage is to set the tools in position. And I know it sounds a bit scary gang tooling. It would have been a bit scary for me the first time I did it. But you just first of all you just plug the tools in place. To tighten them up. Um, the exact position doesn't matter. You, you then dial that in later on because you've got X, Y and Z adjustments for your tool offsets. Remember if you're running long pieces of stock in the spindle, if you're not familiar with turning you might not know about this risk. The parts only being held down this end and at high RPM uh, is a very real risk of this flailing out uh, so you need to have some sort of uh, location at that end you can just turn up a quick acetyl bush or aluminium bush uh, but you need that otherwise it'll flick off center under centrifugal force and you'll have an accident and do damage to your machine even for large diameter work it's just too long uh, to be stiff enough at high RPM without the bearing at the back end. When you're setting your tool offsets and the tool is a drill or a spotter or a reamer you often want to set it up to the bore and quite a good practical way to do it is just by having a pointed uh, setter in the chuck and a pointed setter in your uh, gang tooling block and just eyeball them visually you'll get it pretty close you think sweeping it in with a dial indicator is a good idea and there's a few videos showing you how to do that online but be wary of that horizontal sweeping is often gr gr badly affected by gravity I'll just give you an example of that okay we've got a dial indicator on a block here and um, it's pretty rigid it's tightened up pretty well I've set the dial indicator 
on zero. Bit fiddly holding it here, but okay, it's roughly on zero. Now you imagine you're rotating this in a horizontal spindle in a lathe and you're dialing in a bore. Have a look at that needle when I turn it round. See how far out it goes? So it's gravity. The effect of the dial indicator, it, it, it is pulled down by gravity when it's at the bottom of the bore and it's pulled down by gravity when it's at the top of the bore. And what that does is put the, the uh, bore off center. If you're dialing it into zero, you're not dialing it into zero. You're dialing it into zero plus gravity and you'll be quite a long way off center. So you need an extremely short, rigid way of holding the dial indicator or you'll be kidding yourself about precision concentricity. You just won't be getting it. Some of you might be thinking, well, what about setting the tool offsets? That sounds a bit scary with gang tooling. Um, well, I don't want this to be too long winded a video series and go too deeply into tool offsets. I've done that in other videos a year or so ago. But just briefly, Pathpilot's got a fantastic facility on the tool offsets page to allow you to graphically set the X and the Z. Now that is, in rapid turn, uh, the vertical spindle going up and down is no longer the Z, it's the X, and the longitudinal is the Z. So that was the X in the mill. So to set the length of the part and the diameter of the part, the X and the Z, very easy to set here on this offsets page. And you can look at the table to check the actual positions here. And as far as the Y is concerned, oh, that's a scary one for some people, but there is a DRO here. There's a little DRO, and you can index over, for example, with a pointer, and either change the DRO to zero, or note down what it is. In this case, minus 186.63, and make sure that that is there in your code. So you've got the different Y positions noted in your code. Um, make sure when you go to the settings page that you tick the gang tooling option and then it will automatically change when it's run each little section of tool code. When it changes to the next tool, it'll move to the next Y position. It's as easy as that and it's thanks to Toolmark thinking about having a gang tooling facility. Don't ever take that away Toolmark, it's a great little feature. It allows you to do automatic production on rapid turn. Thanks for watching guys. Remember let me know what you think about Rapid Turn if you've been using it for a while. Are you happy leaving it on the machine or do you think it's better to take it off each time? Let me know that in the comments and it'll help others with this decision as well. Cheers.